going to first introduce the four people that create the framework. We work together for, in some cases, up to a decade. That's Alex. Uh, Inbar, relatively new to the team. Right. Richard Nasser has been with us for how many years now? Over three years. Over three years. So we're the people that create the words that go down on the framework. Uh, the only thing I would like to say is don't clap too much for these guys, okay? I have enough trouble managing it as, uh, managing it as some, sometimes I think we have um, not enough people contributing to the framework, you know, not enough methodologists. Most days, I think we have between two and three too many, okay? So that's the way we're doing it. So thanks for joining us, guys. Alex is going to stay with me, and we'll get started with the presentation. So these are the guys, if you want to influence the framework, you lobby them a little bit. Bribes are not accepted at all. Um, however, flattery works wonderful with those guys. So if you've got a really good idea and you flatter them a little Only bit. Only a little bit. Only a little bit, we'll go with that. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the safe, the past, present, and future. We're going to do a little demo. Um, that's kind of why I'm here. You, you saw Chris. We, we recruited Chris to the team for a couple reasons. Uh, at the, at the, the point we are in the business, I think operational excellence is absolutely critical, and he's hired for that. Also, his English sense of humor. So we're still balancing whether that works. Hey, Chris, let's do a little calibration. Alex, say awesome. Awesome. Chris. No. <laughs> No. Try again. Good. 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 Um, really good, Alex. Really good. <laughs> so it keeps, us, keeps our enthusiasm mitigated and, and, and kept to, a, to an even point. So, uh, so that's our role. So um, the, the, I think I'm in a really fortunate place at this point in my career as I get to focus on what I really like to do, which is helping people through the framework. Um, a few things. So a little bit about our history, just so you'll know. We started out with different points of view. Alex and I were working, implementing pre-safe around the globe. Alex lived in Kiev, Ukraine, so there was nobody in Kiev, Ukraine, which meant that he always had to travel. So we did rollouts at, at some of the largest enterprises, and we invented the thing on the fly. Alex was typically at the remote site. I was typically at the US site. So you know, distributed multinational development is what we do. The framework kind of grew up that way. We've never had the fortune of 27 people or 100 people in a room. Uh, so Alex and I have been at it for some time. Um, uh, he just received his green card yeah, last week absolutely well actually since we value demo and objective we do. evidence we'll demo it. demo demo green card five-year effort to get us to that point uh, but anyway I was talking about the fact how we formed so I was working independently I was at one of those points in my career where I, I wasn't responsible for running a company which was really great because for the first you know, 35 or 40 years, that's what I did. And I kind of, you know, those responsibilities wore on me for a while. Um, met up with a couple people, Colin O'Neill, who, who, who lobbied us and said, hey, there's, there's, a, there's a business hiding under here. Uh, Andrew Gemelo, who, you've, who will, you'll meet over time here, uh, who, who, who said, you know, I think education is gonna be the key to unlocking us. We need a great framework, we need the ability to operate the company, and we need, we need an educational platform for that. So we actually started out as three separate enterprises, and after about a year, you know, the motivations, the incentives didn't align well, so we just threw in the towel. So Scaled Agile Inc. Is, is a consolidation of that. And if you see perhaps more web properties than you might like to, it's because we're still in the process of consolidating all that into a common view. But the common view is we, we see ourselves as a learning company. Um, we're engaging in the market from the standpoint of the value of lean and agile development. And that's simply because as of today, it's the best we know. It's the best thing we can find. If, 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 we, if we knew other things that were better, we'd call it that. We don't really care what the label is. What we care is whether or not we can reflect the best way to build uh, large software and systems. We do it because it's so hard, okay? But because it's hard, isn't that why you're here? Isn't that what you've, why you've dedicated yourself to, to, to that, particular, that, particular world, that particular world? So we've consolidated our efforts over the last, last uh, few years. So consequently, we're only, we see ourselves as only a few years old. But we've been working together literally off and on for decades. So it's a team of, of people that now are harmonized under a common view, a common set of incentives, which is frankly build a really great IP stack. We hope the world's best IP stack for lean and agile at scale and help people adopt it and succeed with it because business success is our success. Um, you saw the, uh, the little survey of uh, version one, you know, whatever we, we rank higher. Well, we don't rank higher because we're great at marketing. 
we actually hired a marketing team for the first time this year. We rank higher because it works, okay? We rank higher because when you are able to bring agile development and agile teams to the larger enterprise, they like it better. It's more fun. How many here are on an agile team, been on an agile team? Is it more fun? It is. It is, okay? So how is it that having more fun helps the company meet its objectives? We didn't always believe that way, right? Having more fun at GM in 1965 did not necessarily mean that the company would better meet its objectives. Why is it, why is it, why is that alignment? I'm not gonna answer not that. Gonna answer. Why is more fun so incredibly important to the business? People enjoy what they're doing. They contribute more. Do we, as you've been part of an Agile team, I, my first one was 2001 when I was first on Agile team. It was more fun. How many of you have been on a really high-performing team? Re leave your hand up if you worked as hard as you ever worked. What's that tell you? Right? Working, being part of a high-performing team is a lot more fun than not being part of a high-performing team. It's more motivational, it's more engaging, it gets you up every day, it makes it fun to go to work. In a sense, that's really what we're doing here. And the Agile paradigm, which is so incredibly powerful, what you know, I found that I was blown away by, it, is, is the mechanism we use to do that. So if we, can bring, if we can bring Agile development to larger enterprise and not kill it, with our, you know, with our regulations and governance and traditional command and control structures, we're, we're gonna win. And these enterprises are doing that are gonna win and you're, you're gonna see that in our case studies today. But I belabor the point. Let's talk a little bit about the past. Why? Because that was the title I was given three months ago, past, present, and future. We have to. Right. Safe is a work in process. It isn't done. How could it be done? How could a framework intended to help you advance your skills for building the world's most important, most complicated systems, systems that have incredibly high cost of failure, you know, uh, financial, financial ruin, uh, personal failure, lack of security in your personal or your life, uh, you know, how, how could we be done with that? It seems like a really silly idea. So we continue to move. Now, we've moved pretty quickly, and one of the reasons that Alex and I would say for the last three or four years, I've really felt behind the eight ball because when we wrote version one, it's like we know more than we were able to put in the framework. When we got two out there, it's like, okay, why do we make the portfolio look like it goes backwards? Okay, and we know more than we put in the framework. So I can tell you all a secret. Dean, every time we release a new version, he says, this is so far the best version of the framework we ever had. <laughs> Every version goes like that. It is true, and, but, we, but we can't possibly be done. So where do we come from, okay? How many have seen this picture? Anybody, raise your hand. Great, okay. Um, black and white because they didn't have color monitors back then, right, Alex? This was, this is what we had, this is what CRT, we had CRT, old big right. ones, right? This was the first discovery at companies uh, like BMC Corporation and, and, and various others where we had significant numbers of agile teams that weren't operating in a coordinated fashion and then we weren't applying cadence and synchronization. And indeed, much of my learnings from, from the rollout of the framework comes from a large failed rollout of Scrum at scale, right? Simply empowering teams is not enough. And a even a, a very capable feature team can't create enough value to really create a big system. I can tell you got a comment, you're chewing on it. No, uh, I'm good. Okay. okay, good. So, so this was my first view of say, look, we, people have got to work together here. I mean, is that like rocket science? Our team should work together to build a bigger system. How do you help them work together? You establish cadence and synchronization. And this is a couple years before, before uh, Reinertsen described it so well. We moved on from there. This is my PowerPoint skills. This is the, <laughs> the, the, the complete limit. I have no kind of graphical rendering capability, whatever. Uh, this is where I could get with PowerPoint about 2009. Um, this evolved on the blog. I meant to go back. The, the blog has been shut down because there's so much old stuff there, it's embarrassing. So I meant to go back and pick out some older pictures, but I didn't really have a chance to find them. So this is where we're in 2009, uh, prior to SAFE being launched. The portfolio was some stuff. It exists. Right. It, it, yeah, there, there is a portfolio. It exists. But most of the work was still here where, where, where teams do the work, and that's, that's still the case today. Move forward to 2010, the Agile Enterprise Big Picture. Uh, one of the things that we discovered at some time, I, I think a couple things about the framework that make it unique. It has a UI. This is it. Even if you don't agree with it, you can argue about it. 
if we stacked up the 15 or 30 or 50 or 100 books that have contributed to the body of work, how do you argue with that? But you can argue with this. If you can argue with this, you can say, I'm engaged in a discussion about whether this thing works or whether it doesn't. So having, having that UI was a really big deal. It made it approachable. The other thing we needed to have was a noun. I remember a discussion with one of the uh, uh, thought leaders in, this, in, in the space about developing the framework, moving out of a large set of somewhat disparate ideas into a codified framework. And I remember saying to the guy, as we, as we put a label on it, I said, people want to buy a noun, right? You're going to buy something, it has to be a thing, right? A person, place, or thing. I want to buy a thing, so you have to have a noun. So we had to name it. So we, we fooled around with different names off and on over time. Scaled Agile Big Picture, the Agile Enterprise Big Picture, et cetera, et cetera. And finally came up with the Scaled Agile Framework Big Picture. Now we've kind of dropped Big Picture now because it's become synonymous with the Scaled Agile Framework. Although I did meet a, a consultancy the other day that's fairly new that's called the Agile Big Picture. So we had a little stare down. Okay, Agile Big Picture, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool, that's fine. And that was 2011, so this is basically a bright at version 1.0. Investment themes are up there. Uh, where's the value stream, Alex? Uh, <laughs> ain't no value stream, right? No we value streams. A few other interesting things. The kilogram thing. Right. It's WSGF. And at some point we decided, wait, why don't Actually, we call it, was it WSGF? We, we were teaching an SBC class and somebody said, what's the kilogram? We said, that's WSJF, and they said, what'd they say? Why don't you call it WSJF? Duh. Another great. thing, as you probably noticed, release and PSI. Well, these days we use PSI mostly as a unit of measure for pressure. That's all. <laughs> that's right, so we've eliminated that. And you can see the thinking evolved over time. Um, then we arrived at, at uh, version 2.0, which was the best framework we'd ever created, Alex. The only thing I can't figure out is why we made it look like the portfolio went backwards. I don't, I don't get why, what our heads were at at that point. It's like we organized the stuff and we pushed it all to the left. The runway moved to the program level, which is where you need it. That was a Freudian slip. It's a I'm Freudian sorry. slip, yeah. Just, we, we had time dyslexia at that point, okay. Version 2.0. Uh, version 3.0, I skipped to version 2.5 because I didn't find that picture. Uh, version 3.0 was the best framework we could produce at that time. Absolutely. Probably many of you are on version 3.0. We'll find out in a second uh, whether or not uh, um, three level safe addresses your problem or not. Um, now, the big branch. So about two years ago now, folks like Raytheon, uh, and, and some of the largest uh, um, system integrators and, and frankly some of the largest software enterprises came to us and said, no, this is cool but it is not enough. This does not solve our problem. Uh, we, 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 have, uh, we have more effort in, in, in coordinating the arts and delivering value than we have in the team-based stuff. So we, we need more stuff. And what's more, we'd like to apply this to the build out of what, um, I, I, I use the word cyber physical systems but nobody's ever heard of it. So until I can get more people used to it, I can't use it very much, but that's what they are. Things that go bump in the night, uh, robots, uh, war fighters, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, industrial controls, uh, you know, systems that, that manage fluidics and optics and, and satellites and all that stuff. I actually, my background uh, is, is, is it as an aerospace engineer. So I'm a systems engineer, I'm a systems thinker, even more than a methodologist, and that's why I think that we're able to reflect part of what we do as, as a system in, in process. So they said, help us build bigger systems. I said, well, I don't build those kinds of systems. Help me figure out what to, what to write down. Uh, and that's actually when we went back to first principles, because if you ask yourself the question, back maybe two years ago, what does it mean, what is a lean approach to building large-scale cyber-physical systems? There wasn't a lot of work in the space. There's the work of Kennedy and Ward uh, and, and Reinertsen, I think, the quintessential thinker in this space. So we started experimenting. We said, let's build a system instead of a portfolio. And that lasted for about 30 revs of the big picture. And we went on that and said, but guess what? That system is part of a system of systems. It's also part of a portfolio. So we got this lecture, if you will, from our systems builders. And they said, hey, maybe we build uh, an entertainment system for a car. So it's great that you've selected the system of systems because we can figure out how to integrate you know, the CD player and the Bluetooth enablement and all that stuff. But that system of systems is also part of our portfolio. 
So we have to have both views. We have to be able to understand how we impose requirements on it from our customer perspective, but it's part of the portfolio because it's our system. I'm gonna sell that same thing to another automotive manufacturer. So we're starting to worry now, right? I believe LSC Big Picture alone went through 80 or 86 yes. revisions while we were doing that. And maybe some of you were part of LSC uh, MVP, as we call it, that was an experiment. Anybody participated in LSC yeah, classes? Yeah. Oh, we have some people, awesome. Well, thank you guys, we learned thank a lot. Thank you for building SAFE for us. Yeah. Okay. Um, what happened next? SAFE for Lean Systems Engineering. Well, it's still a branch. Okay, then I remember we went to, we'll go right here. To, um, oh, there it is, SAFE for Lean Systems Engineering. Now, we threw in the towel. Okay, what do I mean by throwing in the towel? We were modeling a big system in the context of a system of systems and in the context of a portfolio, and we didn't have enough surface areas. So we threw in the towel. The last thing I wanted to do was to add another level to safe. I'll tell you, I was not enamored with the idea of saying, yeah, we need another level in the hierarchy. We threw in the towel and basically said, interestingly enough, we need that level in the hierarchy because we need to be able to talk about the system of systems, which got relabeled to a more generic term that helps everyone. If you're, uh, you know, a big IT shop and a, a package shipping company, or you're building, or you're building a satellite, you're building maybe the web farm that delivers the satellite data. Everybody can start to think about value. We got triggered into value stream thinking. We stream thinking. We went back and we studied uh, some of the work of Ward and others that are saying, hey, we need to think about the way value flows through the enterprise. And then value stream started to become a first class citizen. So that that replaced that. So we did have another level. Now we were worried about that. And I'm doing, I'll be darned if I'm gonna have another level in SAFE. And one of our students yeah. took it. In one of those classes, did something by example. That was amazing. We, we, we were thinking, how do we do that? And some systems are not that big, so you not always So how do we it. not blow away it the says, people that don't need it? Do this with your big picture. And that's how you have what we have at SAFE 4.0. Basically the big picture that reflects the levels of complexity of your enterprise. Very simple, but you cannot be smarter than your customer. That's no, what that, we that's, learned. You, you, you can't outthink people. We talk in leading SAFE, as most of you take it, about the IQ problem we have as leaders. <laughs> Every leader that has five or 10 or 15 employees that's done a good job of recruiting is largely outsmarted by those people. They have five to 10, the IQ points, and I don't tell this story so much anymore, but it's also another thing. Those, that team that reports to you has something that you can never, ever have. You know what that is? You can never have this thing when it comes to decision making. They have diversity of opinion, right? You can never have your own diversity of opinion. I have two opinions on the same topic. That doesn't really help. So, so that, that's, that's why we learn in sessions like this. That's why this is a reflection of what we've learned from you. That's why we can say, I think it'll help you at Raytheon because people at Raytheon helped us build it. We think it'll help you at, uh, you know, at FedEx or Capital One or any of the other larger enterprises moving down this, 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 this direction. Um, safe for Lean Systems Engineering. And then we had one more session. Mm -hmm. And in that other session, we had people that were building systems and people that were building large software systems. And what did they tell us? Well, guess what? Please do not make two frameworks. Have one. Well, another great learning. Another great learning. So here we are with the two big branches, right? So what do we have? Two different certifications. The people that are building big cyber-physical systems, like they don't build software. The people that are building software are never involved in cyber-physical systems. So I remember we left that SPC class a little bit with our tail between our legs. And Chris, you probably reflect that I walked into your office, like, what was it, two years ago August, or a year ago August, yeah, I don't remember when it was, and said, oh my goodness, this is gonna be interesting. We really need to make a single framework. And it was intuitively obvious in hindsight. It wasn't obvious in foresight, but it wasn't obvious that the principles and values were the same, but it turns out they are. So that brings us to where we are today, Safe 4.0 for Lean Software and Systems Engineering. And uh, we, we don't teach that here today. And as you notice from the people that are attending, almost all of our talks are really on advanced topics. We're talking about the way we'd like to advance things. There's no basic training uh, in SAFE present today. Um, but, oh, are we done? Chris within, oh, joining us within six or eight months, he said, if you want excellence in execution, you gotta stop once in a while and give people a chance to catch up. So he said, basically, I don't want to hear anything about 5.0 for a while. 
So we're not talking about 5.0. We're talking about Voldemort. Right. So this is the, the this is the framework rep, the, the the version of the framework who we who we whose name shall not be mentioned. Okay, that's that's where we're headed. But past is past, and comes a time to put 3.0 to bed. So for those of you who are still successfully using 3.0, I'm sorry, we're going to shut down the site. And the reason is is there's content on there that no longer represents our current thinking. There's inadequate support for coordinating multiple art value streams. The value stream construct is too weak. It's time to go. However, 4.0 was designed very carefully to be fully backwards compatible. So if, if any activity or artifact exists in 3, it exists in 4. Alex, you want to elaborate at all? Well, absolutely. Uh, we know that most of the change was pretty much additive to, yep. to 4.0. And that means that all the 3.0 implementations in the field will be benefiting from 4.0 without much change. However, on the other hand, 4.0 will provide a lot more valuable guidance, especially on that fancy level where a lot of complexity exists where we need to coordinate better multiple edge release trains that deliver value together, where we need to know more about the solution and the context of that solution. So about, about a year ago, I visited one of the world's largest banks, and they were happy with their safe implementation. Did they have challenges? Did it solve all their problems? Was it a pill that made all their challenges go away? No. But they were happy with their implementation. And then they started with a Q&A session about what about this, what about this, and what about this. Almost Every question they asked had been reflected in 4.0, but they hadn't moved because it was too big a migration for them because they'd rolled out 2.5 training. So I understand the pain, and, 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 and half of me wants to apologize for needing to move forward. The other half says, let's get over it and move on because we're learning new things. It'd be like saying, well, let's, let's just let's stick with waterfall and make a point. Not to mention that courseware has Absolutely. evolved significantly ever since. Leading safe. Now we don't uh, no longer support product owner orientation, scrum master orientation, but we have a great substitute for that. So those, it, those courses had no knowledge of you know cross art uh, coordination. Those courses had no knowledge of flow, which is increasingly the way we think about uh, think about uh, um, positioning safe and implementing safe. In our in our scrum master course, uh, the notion of flow has to be introduced because they're part of the flow through the enterprise. So they just don't tell the right story anymore. They're not our best work, and we need to move on. Talk about the present. Three level safe. This was the collapse expand mode that was brought to us by some clever person in the room. And four level safe. How are we doing? Now, yesterday we tried, after, after, after testing the live polls for about eight different times, Yesterday we tried it, Chris tried it first, it didn't work. I'll bet this works because I saw his work. <laughs> so the questions are as follows. My enterprise gets along just fine with three level safe. Notice it doesn't say 3.0, it's not on the list. You can't answer that one. Um, we adapt some contracts from four level safe, right? It is a framework. We need four level safe, that's what we do. We need both three and four level safe. We have situations where we, where we have standalone arts that do pretty well, or maybe a couple of arts that produce products, and then Final question number E for those of you is, what the heck is safe? Anyway, um, let's vote. <laughs> so the sweet spot in the middle there, it's oscillating a little bit, is basically some combination of both, right? We use both on our enterprise. We require a four level, but we, and we've adapted maybe a solution content or solution context or, or across our coordination. So we'll give that another minute because we actually, this is primary research. Give it a half a minute, please vote. And the winner is for the big enterprise, we need both models. You look stunned. You still uh, thinking about your green card? Especially with this part. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the data. It's good. It's good. More. It's good raw data input for us as well. Um, 
We've, uh, I think, done a fairly decent job. I mean, we, uh, 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 as we think about Chris modes, you know, a good job is, is, is definitely a good job um, of talking about safe, but we've never really made it accessible. It's, it's, and, you know, the nice thing about a website, it's, it's a random access database for content, right? It does not tell a story. So we've just it, it recently introduced the white paper. Richard was the primary author on this. We all contributed. So we have the safe introduction white paper for you. Um, that's, that should be the easy read. So if you're trying to get your mind around safe, three level or four level safe, you might want to take a look at that. Um, here's a question with respect to our marketing prowess. I didn't know that there was such a white paper. I have a copy. I downloaded the white paper from the site. I didn't know it was downloadable for the site. And number E, what's a download, okay? <laughs> Somebody is consistently trolling us. That's right, 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 right. Maybe someone on our team, though. Maybe, maybe so. Okay, so as many didn't know it existed or more than, the, um, than those who have a copy and downloaded, okay? Cool. This is our extraordinary marketing communi communication prowess. It's a re it was a write-only document, okay? We feel good we wrote it, but nobody's really accessed it to read it yet, okay? Like design specifications, write-only documents, right? <laughs> Nobody reads them, but we still have to write them. Because I think we're so productive with our software process that if we didn't stop and write design documents, we'd have too much code. Right? We would we'd have too much feature functionality out there. We'd, we'd overload our users with too good a stuff. So let's stop and document the design in detail uh, as part of that. I don't know why I got off on that tangent. Um, <laughs> I, you just saw my emotion around some of the types of documentation. I went through a, a, a rollout one time and was coaching the teams directly myself, 100 and 150 people of about 400. And we taught, uh, we taught Safer Teams, an early version of that. And, uh, they, and one of their challenges was, let's come back to the definition of done for a user story, okay? Uh, true, true thing. So they came back with the definition of done, uh, and there were director level people, and one of the definitions done for the user story was to update the design documentation. So I smelled a rat. It's like, so I, so I asked management, I said, do you trust me? I'd like to work with your teams. And they said, we're not really sure yet, okay? But we'll give it a shot. So I went out in the teams and I said, who here writes, they called them design specification. No, it was, it was I forget what it was. It was a design specification, I think. Probably, yeah. Right. Who here writes them? Every programmer dutifully raised their hand. So management's feeling pretty good. What's my next question? Who here reads them? Every single hand went down. So management was still with me, so I asked a question. Um, well, I'll pretend like Jeff is my foil here. Why don't you read them? And he said, they're a false sense of security. They're never really current. It's not the way the code really works anymore, and I'm gonna be deluded into thinking something is true that isn't true. So instead, we're gonna do that a little bit differently. Stand in the light. This is a, a fast feedback, inspect and adapt. Yeah. Too Got fast. It. Okay. I have two conflicting jokes about right, it, right, but right. I'll tell yes, you no, right. not a single one. <laughs> um, so about the least fun I have in my life is doing videos. So <laughs> if, you, if you want a fun thing to do, take a course that's normally dynamic and interactive and sit in front of a camera for three to three and a half days, talking to the camera as if it cared. Okay, <laughs> it does not care. At the end of day one, I, t I, told the, I told the producer, I said, this is making me crazy. I can't stand it. I'm looking at a bulb and looking at a bulb freezes me. So I had him put up a picture of his dog. So he, so he hung a picture of his dog underneath the, 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 the lens so that I could talk to somebody. Now, the dog still did not respond, but it beats the heck out of staring at a bulb and pretending like it cares. It doesn't care, right? So. The net result of that is a painful process creating leaf sa Leading Safe 4.0. Here's a question. Use the live pulse. I know Leading Safe 4.0 live lessons exist. I've watched this video course. You couldn't pay me to watch Dean for seven hours, okay?
What, what I didn't tell you is that we actually able, were able to capture the email address for everyone <laughs> who voted for the bottom one. So if you're an SPC that thought you were in good standing up to this point, no pressure. You might want to check in again on the platform to see what your current credentials are. See if you're still there. That's yep. great. Okay. Wow. Uh, how many of you changed your mind while, while voting? <laughs> yeah, we have five more minutes to vote now. Okay. <laughs> Safe Port Auto Reference Guide. Um, proud to announce uh, in your handbook, the full website with some context has been published in handy, ref ha in the light. handy reference guide form. Uh, why? Because you can't read a dang website, okay? And it's just a lot easier. Thank you. Very much appreciate that. Uh, it's just an easy way to flip back and forth. I use it, right? It's on both of my desks. It's like, well, what did I say about this? relative to the other thing. And you know, when you go into the website, you get this, you get this view, but you get tunnel vision. So it's really hard to relate page seven to page nine. So we, we finally finished that project and happy to have that out. Uh, thanks to uh, Pearson, who's been with me for, you know, a couple of decades now. Okay. Um, a new topic area. How many have heard that, that HR is different in agile development? How many know what you're supposed to do about it? <laughs> okay, and that's exactly my experience. So Fabiola Eiholzer, who's an uh, expert in the space and has been coaching some of the world's largest enterprises as they move to Agile, and I collaborated on a white paper. We're going to have that uh, session here a little bit, actually this afternoon right here at 1 o'clock, it turns out. We're going to talk about Agile HR with SAFE. We're going to talk about what's different, why the traditional approaches to, you know, in incenting and motivating knowledge workers just, or the employees just don't work in a, in, a, in a kind of the age of knowledge workers and millennials who frankly have a different expectation uh, for, their, for their environment. Uh, you wouldn't be surprised to know that some small percentage of the people that we work with are basically saying, we have a rigorous governance waterfall model that has largely worked for us. We're a big famous company, but nobody wants to work here under that kind of model anymore. So people wanna see their code. They want to see their stuff get shipped, so you need to change that. They need to change that paradigm. Now, guidance articles are a really rich repository on Safe. I use them frequently. I use them rarely. I did not know they existed. Well, here's the good thing. If I did this same poll in two more minutes, I could change the outcome, right? Totally. You would, all, you would all know they, you would, you would all know they existed. So here, here's, what's our, what's our challenge? Do you think that as of 4.0, we already knew some things that we wanted to change on the big picture? <laughs> Absolutely. We can't do it, right? We need, we need, we need our instructors to have a stable point of reference. People don't mind change so much. Continuous change is hard. Always changing is difficult. Not knowing what that course is going to be like is going to be different. So we, so we, we, we froze that for a while. That's why we're having fun with uh, the, the notion of Voldemort here. We froze it for a while, um, but we can still innovate. We can update every single article. We'll blog post it. We'll tweet it. We, I, um, uh, I'm, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Dean Leffingall. I will not tell you what I had for breakfast. I will not tell you what I'm mad about. I will not opine on the fact that the Cubs are in the World Series. Okay, what are the odds of that? You won't find that on my, on my tweet. What you will find is, hey, we just updated this article or we have a new course that you should know about. So if They're tweeting now, the dean said that cops are in the that's world. <laughs> that's right, that's good. Uh, okay, what else we got? A new I guess book? I have to talk about this because it's your book, yeah. otherwise it's too egocentric. Subjective too. Subjective, okay. Um, so. Talk about telling a story about SAFE. Well, Alex is a, is a good author. He's also an illustrator. He illustrates and writes at the same time. So the last four to six months, he's written a book called The Rollout, a novel about leadership and building a lean agile enterprise. I think he started off to talk about how to implement the practices of SAFE, but I think his thinking evolved as he wrote the book. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how many of you here ever had a problem of resistance on behalf of management or leadership or mindset issues or something. Nobody almost, right? right? So the book turned out about that. It wasn't planned that way, but the more I tried to make it about safe and about implementing safe, the more it, 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 it would become a book on, my, on the mindset. And it's just natural, I guess. So 
that's, that's the read. Yep. We have uh, 70 copies for giveaway uh, tomorrow at noon. Um, and it's available on Amazon in both formats, in digital and paperback. So let's have some fun with that. It's a novel. It immerses you into the uh, core of the events. Have fun. It's a good way to think about it. Thanks. You, do you all know Gene Kim? Yeah, okay. Um, M, Campbell Pretty, wrote, a, wrote a, a short little book. Where's M? Is M here? We talk about how Cotter is very explicit, and I fully agree with Cotter, by the way, that cultural change comes last, not first. Well, that's not necessarily university held, universally held opinion, and this, and this uh, kind of uh, historical um, historical uh, treatise, M talks about how she attached culture directly. I'm working with one of the organizations that, uh, there was a video that basically said, I think M can, well, it was a public video, a webinar that they said, those were the people we liked the least <laughs> in the entire company. It's like nobody wanted to inter inter interact with that team. And she took on leadership of that team and evolved it by basically trading, creating a culture that worked. And she implemented SAFE in the culture rather than implementing SAFE and let the culture follow. So just, we just appreciate when people can, can add to the body of work and help people understand SAFE. It's just helpful. We already talked about the SAFE Scrum Master. Fills the, the, the last major hole at the team level. It's a pretty important course. Now, press release will go out tomorrow. We talk about not just the fundamentals of Scrum. You have to understand that, but you have to understand the context that you're in. Scrum in the context of the enterprise. You have to understand a little bit about flow. We introduce, we, we introduce Kanban for teams because you've never seen me say, you know, Scrum is good and XP is bad. And XP is great and Kanban doesn't work, right? Aren't we kind of beyond the time when we should be thinking about Scrum versus XP versus Kanban? It's 2016. Shouldn't every team be able to apply the best practices of all? Shouldn't a team with a really good lightweight project management practice, product management practice around Scrum understand their flow? Shouldn't a flow-based team be able to integrate on cadence and synchronization with other teams? Shouldn't every agile team be able to leverage the basic practices, collective ownership, peer review, peer programming, coding standards, test-driven development that XP brought us? Think about that for a second. Is this a this versus that? Or is this all of the above? We think it's all of the above. We think that we're building the world's most important systems. It's really, really hard. We need really solid code practices. Right, and XP and, and uh, uh, Beck and others have led us down a good path. We need really good, lightweight, project management practices so we know who, whose responsibilities, the role of the product owner, a genius invention of Scrum. And we need to understand the flow through the system. So you don't see us engage in that debate because we don't agree it's a debate. We think it's a union of good ideas that we try to reflect. And the Safe Scrum Master, of course, will reflect that as well. Coming soon, some stuff you can look forward to. Safe Distilled. Uh, Richard and I have been working hard on basically a distillation that says, how do you apply this thing? What is it? Again, even the reference guide says that's a pretty big framework. There's no guidance on implementation. Um, we have four new chapters on implementing um, SAFE and, and SAFE Distilled. Uh, time frame for this is, is not perfectly clear, mostly because I'm the bottleneck. Um, Richard has finished the drafting. It's at Pearson. There'll be some final edits. I don't know. Uh, end of year, early next year, we'll have SAFE Distilled. We're still going to clap for that. Yeah. <laughs> We had the problem that, uh, we almost had the problem with Safe Distilled that we joked about with Reinertsen's work. How many of you have read Reinertsen's work? We joke about somebody should do a Cliff's Notes for Reinertsen, but it'd be twice the length of his book. <laughs> That's kind of the same problem here. What else is new coming soon? Safe for Teams. Uh, Inver already talked about that. Um, what's new about it? It, it? it doesn't meet every use case. It doesn't meet the use case, for example, of a large enterprise that's, that's, that's rolling out safe and they're thereby adopting Scrum at the team level. We love <coughs> Scrum at the team level. We use kind of a Scrum bond process ourselves. Absolutely. We actually gone through a number of evolutions with our framework team. We started out with, I would say, a rigorous approach to Scrum, including estimating work and WSJFing. We found that was for us, with our kind of experience, a little, a little overhead. We tried nothing, we got sloppy. We tried a, a, freight, a straight pull system and we kept making commitments to each other. So we went back to a really lightweight model. Absolutely, and uh, 404 will also incorporate another uh, interesting use case. It's the public version, yeah. which means that we can have an open enrollment class 
on uh, say for teams, but also that same model can be used when you are expanding your existing edge release train or hiring new people that are not yet in the context of that existing work. So that will be a great opportunity to do that as well. We designed that course initially as a closed system. It was designed for helping people roll out safe. So, so excuse me, the exercises were based upon my team's backlog in my context doesn't really work in a public setting. Some people have been teaching it that way, but they need some help. So that's coming next. Coming soon-ish. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. I was in uh, Milwaukee last week, Monday night, for the Milwaukee Scaled Agile Meetup, and I was blown away. Milwaukee is not the largest metropolitan district in the United States. We had 300 people at a Scaled Agile Meetup. Have we crossed the chasm together? We really have. First question after in Q&A is, when are you going to do a release train engineer course? Okay. Um, so we're working on that. This will be an advanced course. It will have a prerequisite uh, that will be enforced through certification. So if you want into this course, you're going to have to be an SA or an SPC. Uh, it is a three-day course, and it's designed to be, there's definitely some theory, some theory in there, but this is experiential. That's why it has to be three days. So uh, come on site. The alpha class is in January 10th and 12th. There's no GA announcement yet. Uh, but the alpha class is free. If you want to reserve a space, send an email to support at scaledagile.com. We'll try to get you into that class. Betas will follow pretty soon thereafter based upon the learnings for alpha. Brand new course. This will actually be the deepest course in terms of total training content because it's an SA plus three or an SPC plus three. So this is our deepest course. How valuable is a, is a great Agile program manager RTE on the release train? Incredibly valuable. Got to have it, got to build it. Uh, one of our new folks, uh, Carl, who's in the service delivery team, is pairing with Alex on that, on that course. And we may have some handoffs, we may not, we'll just see. We all, we all collaborate on all these courses. There's a product owner, of course, but they have stakeholders and they go through extensive review. And one thing we know that even though this course will have to go over certain topics at the program level, value stream level, and beyond, it will not be a repetition of what we know is in the SPC class. It will be a hands-on perspective from, from, from the point of view of facilitator and enabler of the training. Yeah, we will not reteach SAFE in this course. This is just about running great programs. Um, I, in my rollout experience, when especially before we even knew the framework was a framework, when I went on site for every large program, I was looking for two things. I was looking for the basically the friendliest but toughest program manager I could find with traditional skills and a system architect who understood how the system worked. So that became, those were my buddies, right? So those were the people that I would say, with that, I think we can make this effective, this transformation, we can make, make the release train work without it, we're not so sure. More content coming soon, some of which is being developed here now. People are building bigger and bigger high assurance systems with SAFE, systems that have the, for the cost of, you know, the, the, the economic cost of failure is just too great. We cannot afford failure. Big cyber physical systems, uh, systems that go bump in the night, systems that sustain life uh, in the hospital, systems that protect us from a security standpoint, uh, systems that, that, that help us secure our nation's uh, defense. Um, that's work in process. And uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to have a couple examples from the medical area. We're going to have a full day workshop on that. And that's truly a workshop. We're going to talk for a couple hours about what we know. And then we're going to open it up and we're going to have the people in that session tell us more. Uh, adding hardware to the mix. Yeah, absolutely. We see more and more enterprises pivoting to lean and agile in that space. And if we can say that as a software industry, we are far over that chasm, we're done with it. Everybody understands that lean and agile is the way to go. It's yet not true for so, hardware. So I'm building a mold or a, a ASIC. I can't iterate, I, sorry, I can't iterate. I don't need those two week sprints. I'm kind of done with that model, right? Can't be done with that model. We have to say, look, we're gonna have to reduce the batch size. We're gonna have to have checkpoints. We're gonna have to figure out how to integrate and indeed, I think the science in this area will be designing explicitly for integration points. Integration points control product development. If you don't have them, you have an uncontrolled product development process. Yep, so that's our talk at uh, 2.25. Um, have a co-presenter, co uh, Harry Kahneman. And the third talk, which is on value streams. How many of us had some, some struggle identifying value streams in a complex enterprise? Anybody ever? 
It's not as simple as just identifying the operational value stream and development value stream, and it's always one-to-one -one relationship, and the world is perfect. That's there's the, no over-specialization. No, there's no functional areas. There's no geographic distribution. In Narnia. Yeah. In real world, different right. pictures. So what we're trying to uh, do is to avoid really extreme choices. If I can only organize around capabilities, but that doesn't work, then subsystems only? No, not necessarily. So we'll talk about certain patterns that will allow you to better understand and analyze complex cases, many-to-many -many relationships between systems and operational workflows, skill set constraints, function constraints, and other things like that. So that's a talk at uh, 1 p.m. We talk about the three planes of complexity. The first one is the systems themselves we use to, to build the solution. Uh, the second one is the functional organization that overlays that. That might be V and V, it might be traditional test. And the third one is the specializations and the specialty skills that serve multiple places. And those all add a lot to complexity. But we need to help with that. Value streams are a great construct, but you don't walk into a company, they're not like exit paths in the, air, in the airport, right? Or, in the, in the airplane. It's not like they light up and tell you where they are. They're an abstract notion, but they're a critical notion. It's how we get started. Um, in addition, another new program. So a number of us have introduced ourselves as safe fellows. We think we know what that means. We think it means that you can trust us, that we really understand the framework. Uh, nobody has ever claimed that label that hasn't done dozens of enterprise transformations. We're going to open that up this year. We talked about it last year. We didn't get around to doing it. Um, Drew's going to have a session uh, later on, actually um, October 26th, which is tomorrow, right? No, it's today. That's today in Meadowbrook about that. Uh, and our goal is to establish a community of foremost experts who provide industry leadership on lean agile transformations using SAFE. Okay, people that will eventually be a little pull down list that says, I am a large enterprise, I need help, and I want a consultant that understands change management, understands SAFE, has a lot of, you know, has enough hard bark on them, has, has plenty of experiences that can help me with that pull down, find this person and give them a call, okay? And they'll, they'll coach you one way or another. So we want to create that community as kind of the, the top of the mark for people that can do that. Um, that, prog that program is being opened up this year. The SPCT program is, is, our, is, our, is, our, is the way we leverage the business and help those of you who have a thirst and who simply want to do those transformations. That's my mission. That's my commitment. That's what I am, right? I, I train trainers because I can't get to that many enterprises. Uh, that program uh, is, it has a bunch of momentum as well. I think we have 30 or 40 people through it. Some courses, for example, at least initially, the RTE course will be taught only by SPCTs because it requires advanced skill. I think you know kind of the commercial risk that we took with our model. Our model was, we'll teach you to be an SPC. How many are SPCs? I bet we have a pretty big number. Great, most of you, great. We'll teach an SPC, and here's some courses that you've never seen that we're gonna license you to teach. And you know, that's kind of an open source view. It says, here's the content, let the market sort it out. But certain courses, for example, the RTE course and the SPC course itself aren't licensed that way. So we're gonna have, a, we're gonna have to have a, a, a tier of things that are significantly advanced where we have to have a greater, you know, warranty, right? A greater uh, implied promise of, of, of equity on that. So that's getting opened up as well. Bunch of folks are here. We just, we saw a, a bunch of hands, uh, people that are SBCs and these guys are all headed down that path. And these are the people that, that every single one of them has, has transformed more than one enterprise. That's the near future. Let's talk about the future. Safe is big, we admit it. As I tell people in class, if you'd build smaller systems, I'd make a smaller framework, okay? But you're not, you're building big systems. And we see it all the time. We see, we saw one case where over 2,500 people were working basically on a, it's not monolithic, it was certainly component, it was an, a banking application, 2,500 people. That's what we're dealing with here. So we need a, we need, we need a framework that handles that. That's our, that's our, you know, that's our claim, if you will, is that we can do that. Well, that doesn't necessarily make it easy to get started. And as we started in, in the last year or two, doing some investigations and some assessments and some retros on some successful enterprises, we started discovering things. And um, unsuccessful too. And, uh, no. No. I don't remember that. What did, did we discover? We discovered that you have to do some things. 
If you head down this path and you don't understand lean agile principles, you don't know how to customize safe. You don't know how to modify it for your purpose. We, we did, we did uh, uh, one or more situations where we said we went all the way through and everything looked great until we realized that the teams themselves weren't cross-functional, right? They were, they were highly specialized teams. So there were teams that would do certain types of development and other teams that do certain types of tests associated with that. They weren't cross-functional. Cadence synchronization, synchronization isn't optional. Yes, we support Kanban, but cadence and synchronization yeah. is part of it. Um, PI planning. If you're not doing PI planning, you're not doing safe. I know it's a tall ask. I know it's a tall order. I know it's not a trivial thing. How many have experienced it? There's no substitute, right? So we had a discussion last night. It's like, I have an idea. Let's let the people who know how to build the system plan how to build the system. Isn't that like a genius insight? <laughs> that, could, that could work. That's like, that's brilliant. How do we do that? Well, we should tell them exactly how they go about designing and building and planning the system. Not the case. You know how this was discovered? We said, we have a big problem with not understanding the system design and requirements, and we don't have a plan to release it. I said, how big a room do you have? They said, we have a really big room. We'll get everybody in it, we'll figure it out. And we created a simple agenda that said, you folks figure out how to build it. And they came away and, you know, charged up, enthused, empowered. We, and they, and the, the PMO leaders came away saying, how did we ever plan their work? And once they'd done that, other leaders, VPs and sales and marketing, when they were asked a question is, when can we have a thing that isn't in the current PI, what would they say? I don't know because we haven't planned it yet. Okay, and therein lies a change. The, 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 the ultimate authority and responsibility handoff from management to the teams. And a message about planning and committing this work is hard, so we shouldn't do it willy-nilly, and we shouldn't do it without consulting the people that build it. System demo. Uh, we can't do the system demo. It's too hard. How's, it, how's the PI go? Late discovery. You know, the, the tough integration problems. Inspect and adapt. That's a tough ceremony. That's, hey, gosh, that, Dean, you don't understand. That's three hours for everybody on the train. What's three hours as a percentage of the time in a 10-week PI? I'm not good with the numbers. Right. Less than 1%. But we don't do that because we can't afford the investment in that. Excuse me? Can you afford not to have these people working on the systemic issues? Architectural one, we lean agile leaders. Enough said on that. Coming soon. Uh, we have a session on this. I don't know if I have a slide for that. I don't have a slide for that. We have a session uh, on Essential Safe that we're running. I didn't put that label here. Uh, we also have a white paper that we're handing out that describes Essential Safe. We've been prototyping that stuff. How do you implement Safe? Okay. So probably we have a little showdown too. Well, what is this? Implemented. Uh, safe implementation roadmap. So many of you probably know about Safe Implementation 1, 2, 3. Raise your hands if you do. Right, uh, the, the, the way we suggest to uh, make sure that we have change agents, that they train the leaders, and that we launch trains. Now, this is an extension, a more detailed way of thinking about that. And it's also a way to reason about all the necessary um, uh, portions of that uh, uh, walkthrough. So if you think about it, you need at some point to say that we are ready to consider safe as our way to go, right? We start on that journey, and it may not be necessarily the full-scale rollout, but at least we know that we would like to get started in this particular domain. That's a go button. And then we want to train um, change agents to rely on their support in safe implementation. We would like to address leaders. We would like to identify value streams and kind of script the initial idea of the implementation across the board. Then we would like to uh, prepare and launch the art. And as you probably noticed, there are little nice buttons along the way. Courseware. We need to train people to know what, what it is they must do. There are also toolkits. Uh, this is the other part of our curriculum. These are the tools that you as an SPC can use to facilitate uh, the rollout. And then we launch the art. Um, please take a look at this from a perspective of outcomes as well. We have business results as a result of uh, 
uh, rollout. So we will start seeing some as early as right after launching the train, and then we'll coach the teams through art execution, launch more edge release trains in that value stream, and expand to other value streams in the portfolio, and eventually sustain and improve the whole enterprise. That's uh, actually a very simple model that mm -hmm. implementing one, two, three was a little bit too too silent. Actually, about. if you look at this from a one, two, three perspective, and we may modify <laughs> this, but step number one, one, train the change agents. Yeah. Step number two is train the executives. And, and then there's three, okay? A lot of three there to, to make that work. Um, let's take a look. Not yet introducing Voldemort's cousin, niece, nephew, yeah. say 4.1. Well, if we did, if we were ever going to have a new release, what, what might it look like? Well, let's, let's, let's think about that. So we'll have um, Inbar to assist us with a little showdown. And Inbar put a lot of effort in, in setting up uh, an environment for this. So let's, let's start with Essential Safe first, because that's uh, really an important part of the, um, uh, of the demo. So Inbar, please move us to this. As one of the uh, organizational paradigms for SAFE as a body of knowledge, we consider it essential SAFE big picture, not only three-level SAFE and four-level SAFE, but also essential SAFE. And it's navigable just as any other big picture. We can see that easily by clicking any button, and you, there's a... You know you can click on the picture, right? <laughs> Really important. Okay, good. We needed another poll, but yeah, th yeah. that's, that's okay. Poll, that's good. Yeah. And obviously, you return back to the same type of big picture you basically departed from. So if, if that was essential safe big picture, we're coming back to the same uh, view. So think of this as yet another view on safe. And sometimes you need that uh, simplified view to better understand uh, what you talk about in terms of key success patterns of which we listed 10. Uh, implementation roadmap. Let's take a look at that. It's also navigable. So let's see, same picture, although we can click on different steps and see uh, what's, what's written there. Now, most of the content that you will see here is uh, taken from Save Distilled. It's basically the new development uh, that uh, Richard and Dean put together, and we will eventually have that uh, at some point at the website. This is a sandbox, so no reason to freak out yet. Right? This is still in the closed area. But that will be a great way for us to um, see if we could really leverage certain knowledge about how to, for, for example, create implementation plan. And this is something that we are not uh, diving too deep, even in an SPC class for now. Yeah. We will in the future, obviously, but not just yet. This is currently under active development. And then all the courses, how they fit into that ecosystem, and so on and so forth. So isn't that awesome? Please say yes. All right, thank so, you, Anbar. Current thinking, and we're sharing the thinking out loud here, uh, is that the implementation roadmap is a pretty safe thing for us. We can put up a new tab, uh, abstract the, the clicks, and work through it over the next few months, and we think we will. So we think we'll go ahead and make that live pretty quickly. That's not a big change. It doesn't change the big picture. Changing the big picture is hard. Uh, it, it reflects on basically all the course where people tend to, tend to freak out, et cetera. So, so that's going to have to hold a little bit. So Essential Safe will probably be a guidance article, maybe even a linked guidance article Absolutely. over time. Uh, and then that'll roll into 4.1. But we're going to head down the road, head, head down the path of uh, basically exposing the implementation roadmap as soon as we can. All right. Now, we have uh, a number of sessions thinking about uh, release Voldemort here, OK? What, if you had to pick one thing that you said, I'd really like to see you folks invest your time in this, what would it be? Building high assurance systems, agile HR, applying safe to large and complex value streams, nailing essential safe, creating solid guidance on the implementation roadmap, more DevOps guidance, where do I put DevOps in my agile, and applying safe to hardware and cyber physical systems. Let's see. What do you think we should be working on?
Hmm. I would not have guessed that so far. How about you? I would because those are my talks. Okay. <laughs> I told you not to clap for these people, okay? It's not good. It's not healthy. But useful. <laughs> Let's give it another 30 seconds to we'll wrap it up. This will, this will seed our conversation uh, for our talk tomorrow about uh, 4.1 and beyond. Very healthy. Okay, two big outliers there. Large and complex value streams and advanced DevOps. Uh, has anybody read uh, Gene Kim, Jess Humble's new DevOps handbook? It's brand new. It's only literally it's a week out. It's really cool. I expected to read all about DevOps automation, automating run scripts, continuous integration. It's a book about flow. It's a book that describes if all that hap if if we're trying to optimize DevOps and giant blobs of new code land on our plate, which are, we're already lost. So they backed all the way up to say, we need to really think about the flow of value through the system. And, and when you implement DevOps, the first takeaway in that book, and I thought it was brilliant because it was, maybe just because it coordinated, it was, it was, it was uh, consistent with our thinking, is find the value, value stream streams, you want to prove delivery value on. Value stream analysis. Pick yeah. that value stream. So if you're going to do continuous integration, pick continuous integration where it matters, okay? So I think we're all evolving together that way. So I think that, I think that continuous delivery, DevOps, and safe will meld. The, 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 you, 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 won't, you shouldn't have to pick. I want a continuous yeah. delivery model. I want to in, in, improve my DevOps. I want to improve my development. We, we can't pick. That's, value streams don't work that way. There's no value stream that, you know, development value stream that just stops at the, at the, at the, at the firewall between us and implementation. So, contribute to that talk, brainstorming safe 4.1 and beyond. That's going to be held here uh, tomorrow, 10.30 to noon. Richard and I will be here doing that. Uh, we have a few ideas. We'll show you the roadmap and essential safe, and then we want your ideas. So we'll seed basically our backlog. Um, that kind of leads to another issue, but, which Jenner for, um, described as another area which we didn't put on that list. Could be on the list. What if we spent a lot of our time helping folks like solution managers, product managers, and product owners understand what they should build instead of just facilitating a process of building a known thing. What if we had a front end on this that incorporated lean startup, personas, the customer's buying journey, requirements workshops, some of the traditional approaches uh, to, to gathering that stuff? That would be a good area. Um, we have 2.5 minutes available for questions which is a form of a miracle, given that both of us are on stage and we both like to talk. Cadence and synchronization, exactly. it's not a miracle. So let's take some questions. Hi, um, for the new version that shall not be named, Yep. do you anticipate more guidance around how value streams sync up with one another when there are multiple value streams, multiple arts? How value streams interact with each other? Right, how they sync up. I think that's a good part of the, the uh, complex value streams. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the talk, and uh, in the future we're definitely uh, intended to do so. However, some of that uh, um, stuff is already in the system. If you check, uh, I think, solution article, yeah, it talks about uh, a, a correlation between multiple different solutions and how that impacts the value streams that contribute to those solutions. Right. Yeah, and the coordination. Artifacts. And the coordination, but we will go beyond that because sometimes, fortunately or not, we just have many-to-many -many relationship between the yes. systems and operational workflows, which makes it less than adorable, but real. Right, because the pre and post planning don't really take into consideration when you have that many trains and some of them are operational trains. Yeah, not to mention right. the coordination after the PI kicks off. Understood. Mm -hmm. Question from the back. Hi, Dean. It's Rupert. Um, your training materials are really helpful. The one area that I find um, it would be good to have some starting points from you is dealing with the CEO level of multi-billion dollar corporations. Um, those people don't have two days to invest. So at least piquing their interest, if there was something that was more in the two to four hour range would be very helpful. So that's a really fair input. I've heard it multiple times. Um, I'm influenced by that. 
There's one reason so far why we've never done that. What do you think that reason is? Everybody will take it, and then what happens? They won't go to leading safe. So we've really been torn by that. If, 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 I think if we position it right, if we figure out the, you know, who delivers it and how, I think it's the right thing. Safe Foundations is, it, is intended for that. We've never had any official executive you know, orientation because it's hard to get them into class. And if you look at step number one on that roadmap, what was step number one? And we had just a recent anecdotal experience where a group of executives were, were meeting together um, and looking at that, and the first step was their training. Um, I was at uh, one of the world's largest financial institutions two weeks ago, and I got to meet with the C-level group, the CIO, world, world's largest financial companies, uh, and his direct reports. And I asked a question, who do you want your people to learn from? And that basically said, well, they've learned from us so far. We built this company. In order to learn from us again, we have to start our learning journey. So that's why we haven't done that obvious thing. It doesn't mean we're not doing it. And we hear it routinely, and we do accept the input.